You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. Hey, Derek. Are Derek. we going to have nicknames for each other each episode? You're great. Oh, you're great. I'm under boob. That's the original. That's the OG. So you're Nev so Nips. Great. I'm under boob. Oh, wait. Really let's good. not give away the studio production value we have here. It's pretty, pretty low. You're probably going to sing anyway, so we might as well just use it. That's a good point. I'm... You're great. 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 Brent, you're great. You guys are both great. great. You're great, Brent. Ah, yeah. oh, like this feels this good. You like it? You feel comfortable? You yeah. feel safe right the now? Microphones turned on. Everything was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but before we were fucking before. yelling at him. <laughs> before it's like, what the fuck, Brent? <laughs> you're great. Welcome to the Hug Life Podcast. I'm Monica Nevy. I'm Mike Collada. And this is our podcast. Mm-hmm. Yay! So Episode sixty-eight. And we have a guest. We do. Brent Flyberg is here. That's Yay. me. Hi. Hi, Brent. I like your Mariners hoodie. Thanks. I do, too. My mom gave it to me for Christmas. What's up, Mom? Because she'll listen to this. Dude, Mom. Hashtag moms. Both of our moms listen to this, too. They do. Pam Jack. My mom does when she's on drugs. Mm. Well, like prescription (laughs) drugs. (laughs) <laughs> already the only fucked time up. She'll listen. That's li- it's not even in the first minute, and I already said something weird. Do though that all of our listeners are on drugs. Yeah, like painkillers. Yes, she had surgery. Pain She's feeling better though. That's fine. good. Okay. Heroin. Whatever yeah. You want. <laughs> whatever you do. Whatever you're feeling. I just hope do you have how you something feel. better to do if you're on mushrooms than listen to this. <laughs> listen to this. Yeah. 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 I don't know how this would exactly work on mushrooms either. This would be good for you. I feel like it wouldn't be a. Sounds don't really. I feel like I don't hear as well. Well, plus she's busy yeah. staring at walls and shit. <laughs> Voices, no, like rhythms, sure, I'll yeah, get into that. But like just, was <laughs> yeah, it's like um, Charlie Brown, teacher. Mm-hmm. Charlie Brown, the teacher. Isn't yeah, that, that song. That the one? Charlie Brown. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. I don't know that song. <laughs> that's not, Cha-cha, real smooth. That's a, that's a, <laughs> Two hops this time. <laughs> yeah. Everybody clap your hands. It's not what I meant, but I do enjoy that song. Positive spin, middle school dances. Oh, wait, they're already so much fun. Middle school, I've been doing that dance forever. <laughs> forever? Yeah, like I did that dance like two Every weeks wedding, ago. It's, I feel like it's a requirement Alone in a wedding, in right? Alone in my bedroom. It's like that. Alone in your bedroom? Hey, mm-hmm. uh, really? <laughs> Cupid shuffle. Dude, I crush line dances. Are you kidding? <laughs> two weeks ago, we were still in Portland. No, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know anymore. I don't even know what day of the week it is. We I think you were. I think you, because I was there the most recent weekend, and you, I believe you guys were at Al's Den the weekend before, right? Oh, yeah, no, how was Al's Den for you? It was, it was a hoot. I got too drunk. You got too drunk? <laughs> I got too, <laughs> too drunk. Too just drunk. in general. Like, that's Portland. I, I feel like that's, yeah, it's a good description it's just of Portland. It's too inexpensive and everywhere. At Al's Den, they have a beer called Chris Kringle, and I was like, you got me. I can't <laughs> not. That seems yeah, disrespectful. Yeah, Monica on the too, Christmas huh? beer. Yeah. Um, Christmas is in the air. Do you guys feel it? Yeah. Oh, happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Yeah. It is currently Hanukkah. Hanukkah. So Mm -hmm. third, fourth night. All holidays are great. Yeah. Hey, holidays. It's it's, it's Hanukkah right now. (laughs) Not Columbus Day. That's the (laughs) worst one. Happy Hanukkah. Um, I should also mention that (laughs) we got to plug our shows up front. We got to do all these plugs. I didn't mean to point to the gesture of the cat. It's fine. (laughs) Podcast producer Delilah's in the studio. What's up, Delilah? What's happening? She's being quiet. Don't disturb her. (laughs) Yeah, she's like half. She's in the thing that cats do where they like sit down and then they just start to fall asleep and slowly close their eyes. She's doing that. Um, People do that sometimes. uh, Do you do that too? No. No, not you. Your dad does. Your dad? Goodbye. <laughs> um, I uh, I will be at Delancey's on 3rd this Friday uh, in Renton, opening for Ralph Porter. It's going to be real fun, real smooth. Cha-cha real smooth. On the 12th, I will be at the Parlor Live in Bellevue. That's Saturday. Those are my shows for this week. Monica, what you doing? This week, uh, tonight, on Wednesday, that's tonight, I will be at Ambassador Wines in Woodenville with Nate Jackson and Simon Kaufman. So I never perform up that way. So if you live up that way, you should come. Uh, and then this whole weekend, I will be at the Seattle Comedy Underground featuring for Stephen Briggs, who is recording his new album. And Sunday, I'm doing Jubal's Battle Royale at Tacoma Comedy Club. You're going to battle it out? Also, Mike and I, uh, our shirts came in today, our new shirts. So Ooh. We ordered. We got more sizes. We got the blue ones, and we have a very special black one with Star Wars writing on it. Yeah, we do. So, it says you're great with Star Wars writing great. on it. It's mm-hmm. pretty awesome. So I'll bring them about. to the underground. Mike may bring some to... Tacoma. Uh, Tacoma? No, it's Tacoma to Renton, but I'll, I'll bring them to Tacoma <laughs> later this month. I am a loss right now. I don't know what days are. I just They all bleed into one. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter either. What are your shows, Brent? What are you doing? I, next week, uh, next week, the 16th, 
of December, I have a show at the Comedy Underground that is a benefit show for the YMCA. So that would be a cool show. Yeah. To to. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're usually fun. I've done one. Yeah. Yeah, they're fun. And then I will be at the Underground that whole weekend as well. And then um, January, the weekend of January 8th, I'll be hosting for Orny Adams at Tacoma Comedy Club. So you should come watch that. That'll He's be fun. very Anyone? funny. Yeah. I worked with him. I hosted for him at the parlor. He's a very funny man. He's a name that my family might recognize. Yeah, you're going to have a good yeah. time. It'll be a fun weekend. I know no one else. Go yeah. see Brett in Tacoma. Um, also, I want to let you guys know to rate and review and subscribe to the podcast, as always, on iTunes. That's very important. Monica looks like she has something to say. Uh-huh. We have one special show that Mike and I are doing together because we are not doing a whole lot of shows together while we're here. We're, not. we're trying to stay as far apart as possible. Uh-huh. I don't blame either of you. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll be in Olympia December 17th, and we made a funny video. Funny video because... Mike's hair is still long. I don't know. Um, Trim my beard today, though. Beard's gone. <laughs> but I didn't even notice. <laughs> wow. Uh, so you can get tickets now. It's uh, barista.com, I believe, is where. Barista.com? We'll post it up. How about that? So yeah. Olympia, that's the only time I'm down there the whole time we're here, and the only show we're doing together. So you should come. Tickets are only $7 in advance. That's pretty yeah. great. Yeah. Great. Woo woo. Um, also, you can, we're on Stitcher. That's a thing. And we're on Racketeer Radio, Thursdays at 7 o'clock. And finally, don't forget to use our Amazon banner. Yeah, you can buy all sorts of mistletoe and just kiss people. Dude, you you could probably buy like a mistletoe cannon on Amazon. I'm going to look this up real quick. Mistletoe cannon? I don't understand what the purpose of that would be. That seems like you shoot the mistletoe at people. You're like, I got you. You have to kiss me. No, you shoot it over two people's heads and then they have to kiss. That's good. Or you shoot it like kind of, you just kind of like angle it a little bit Ooh, and then walk slowly up. over. Not quite straight up. You got to give it a little angle because I'm, I'm picturing she's like 10 feet to my left. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to put it at a slight angle, shoot it up, and then walk over casually. Yeah, and then okay. It drops. I typed in. Oh. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. I, I typed in mistletoe cannon and all that came up was grumpy cat mistletoe shirts. So you can buy those on Amazon <laughs> though too. Grumpy cat yeah. mistletoe. <laughs> yeah, grumpy cat mistletoe oh, man. adult man t shirt. You can get it. You adult buy them. Man adult man. Just for adult, adult men. <laughs> you really got to specify with Grumpy Cat. They're yeah. like, who is this for? I'm pretty sure you can, you can buy mistletoe. Oh, you can. Nice yeah, mistletoe. you can buy it's mistletoe. A ball of mistletoe. Buy a whole mistletoe. ball of mistletoe. Get your kiss on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have you ever bought... I feel like no one's ever actually bought mistletoe. Like, it's just... It just exists places. It's one of those... Yeah, it's one of those yeah. things that people are just like, I have mistletoe. Yeah. And you're like, as a kid, you're like, this is gross. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want to be we here right now. We never have it in our house, like, ever. Yeah, Apparently. all the more reason to buy it on Amazon.com and go through our banner at thehuglifepodcast.com. <laughs> I don't want because if it's up, then I just have to watch like my parents and my grandparents kiss, and that's gross. That is gross. That's gross. Yeah. Yeah. You. You. <laughs> nasty. Oh, that's nasty. Um, <laughs> Brent is here. I'm excited, Brent, because I listen to you on a very terrible podcast called the Offspeed Podcast. Yeah. It's terrible. They're our rivals. They suck. They're the yeah. worst. Um, While I'm on this show, yeah, that one's the worst. That one's the worst. <laughs> and when you're on that show, we're the worst. But we're just not going to talk about this. It always makes sense that way. Um, but I need, I don't know that much about you, Brent. What do you want to know? <laughs> I want to know everything. You want to know everything? <laughs> yeah. This is what we do on this show. We dive into our guests' lives. Are you ready for it? Yes. Did I'm you so think ready. you were ready for it? I didn't think. Dive into your life. Yes. I'm actually very prepared for this. You are? Yeah, well, I don't know. I feel like I talk about myself all day long, all the time. And now you have the opportunity to talk about yourself right? you in the so microphone. You've really been tightening yeah. up yeah. this set. And now someone's a... asking as opposed yeah. to just yeah. me walking Perfect. up to strangers. You're like, i got to right. figure out how to get yeah. into talking about myself. Yeah. And now we just asked you. So. Yeah. Because the only thing I know about you right now pre-stand-up comedy is that you played baseball in college. That's about it. That's the only thing I know. Uh, but you're a sporty gentleman. I am. I like sport. Uh, I like sports. Yeah, I played, baseball. Like sports. I played baseball in college. I went to Whitworth University in Spokane, Washington. Oh. Whitworth. Oh. Yes. This is, isn't there two? There's Whitworth and there's Whitman. And isn't Whitman, Whitman like the weird one? Whitman's like the even more Western Washington uh, University. Yeah. Whitman, Western I thought, was like this, no offense, the smarter, no, like. I let people think I went to Whitman. Okay, it's, yeah. It's, sometimes I'll say Whitworth and they'll go, oh, Walla Walla. And I just say, you know what? Sure. Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, isn't Whitworth religious, though? It isn't is. It's, it? a, okay. it's a Presbyterian school. Was it a dry campus? Uh, like, yes, okay. officially. I had a friend that went there and that was like a thing. That yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, most campuses technically are dry. Like, That's true. I don't know if it's that small. It's like we didn't have a bar. 
right. you know, and and like they had a lot of rules that were like officially like on the books, like you're not allowed to cohabitate and you're not allowed to. <laughs> I think the words they use are genital manipulation. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wait, but also what? they weren't genital allowed genital manipulation. Genital manipulation. Okay. I think the words Oof. they used. But it's they, real they, close they, to mutilation. That's an early like, possible podcast title. Genital manipulation. <laughs> genital manipulation. They, they were also very clear that they had no way to enforce any of these rules because they were like, yeah, we're not going to say that you have to have your door open or anything. And if we're going to walk into your dorm room, there's like a 10 step process. Like there's uh-huh. no way we're walking into your dorm room without giving you enough time to put on clothes. So it was like we, they, I think they were officially like, these are, these are the rules we would like you to live by. And if we, if you're dumb enough to get caught, like we'll enforce them. But like right. you're adults. Do Speed quiz. Like How much gen- general manipulation did you do in college? Speed quiz. A fair amount. A fair amount. That's I, good. Well, because <laughs> um, you played baseball. I did. I played baseball. <laughs> that was not why. I, I I wasn't good at baseball, and we weren't a particularly <laughs> good baseball team. But I did. I did sleep with my RA. Ooh, there you go. That's the one that's nice. supposed to get you in trouble. Exactly. <laughs> Rules. Dude, you're pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, we dated you go for like straight a couple to of the top. We dated <laughs> for a couple of years. <laughs> I, <did sleep. laughs> I mean, we were in a committed relationship, like but you manipulated it out. Yeah. <laughs> Hit that is a gross term. It I feel is. like manipulate and quit. Is that manipulate? <laughs> Manipulate it and quit it? Manipulate it and capitulate it? What does capitulated mean? I don't know. Manipulate and eliminate. That sounds That's, terrible. That sounds yeah. like you killed them yeah, afterwards. Yeah, That's like not you good. Them. <laughs> like, you tell no one about this. <laughs> I, don't any- I don't want anyone to know I have sex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you went to college. I've, seen, I've never known anyone that went to that college before. Is it, it's like a smaller school, right? It's really small. I, when, I think when I went there, we had 2,400 undergrads. It's a bunch of kids who are... Who at the time I felt like, oh, these people are nothing like me. But then as I grew up, I was like, oh, you were like, you didn't grow up in a Christian household, but like culturally you grew up in a very Christian household, but just without that vocabulary. Yeah. So I like in retrospect, it was like, no, you like the, the, the sort of value system was more or less the same. And that's why you showed up and you were like, I don't know what it is about this place, but I like it. I like it. Everybody yeah. gets that's me here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you, Jesus really gets did you, me. That, does that mean if it's a small school, people got to know you on campus? Yeah. Well, yeah. And I think that's one of the coolest things about it was I felt like, Cause, so I have an English degree and I didn't I didn't read a single Shakespeare anything at any point in college. Good for you. And I feel like I feel like there's a that sounds like I'm saying I didn't get a great degree, but I think I I think it's actually a testament to the education I got because I feel like they the professors are so involved like they're the classes are so small and there's so few professors that you have the same one a lot. So they just kind of know what's up. So they're sort of like I don't know. I felt like by the end of it, they're sort of like, okay, maybe you didn't do any Shakespeare, but like we we were watching. You're good. Go on, go on out there in the you world, get it. get it. Yeah. So you had the same professor more than once. Oh, all the time. Interesting. I had one history professor twice, but other than that, I had, and Where I went to go? Seattle U. Yeah. So it's not huge. Yeah, that's a pretty small so, school. I mean, How big were your you guys, your class sizes? There's probably thirty people. Well, depending on the class. Yeah. So like history and English, it was like usually around 30 but my mm-hmm. science classes especially my prereqs were more like 60 okay yeah that, that sounds about right it was kind of like we had one class that everyone had to take that there were 150 people but the, everything else I don't think I was in a class that had more than 30 people yeah yeah and then as soon as I got into like higher level stuff it was like 10 yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. my major was brand new when I went mm-hmm. and so like the first year they graduated it was only like 12 people cool so all of my major classes were like 15 at what first was your major? sports and exercise science cool mm-hmm. it was pretty great that is pretty cool <laughs> I was an English major too Brent. nice I was creative writing though so I'm like I can break the rules yeah. and then they're like no, you can't. <laughs> it's not okay. There are no, no one, rules. No one knows what you're talking about. Being creative. <laughs> did you read Shakespeare? I did. I took a Shakespeare class in the summer, which is a good time to take it, I like feel mid-summer like. Midsummer night. Mm. Midsummer. I took it on midsummer night. It was a dream. <laughs> Just one. It was all a dream. Uh, um, I, uh, I, I took it in the summer, though, and it was easy because it's like you actually don't get pressured into doing shit so much in the summer, especially in Pullman, Washington. Were your not classes a lot to do. smaller yeah. during the summer? Yeah, mine had about. 15 to 20 people in it somewhere around there and it was but the thing is it was like two classes a week for three hours each yeah yeah i took one summer class there was eight people in it 
I took it. I mean, I, nice. summer classes are the super shit, cool actually. I really like summer classes. Because especially in Pullman, stuff. there's no one in the city. You can do whatever you want. And then the people are still drinking and getting hammered and the shit. And, uh, and the shit. And the sh- and shit. Hammered in the shit. Everyone's hammered and pooping. <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> hammered and pooping. Can you please? Right in the down? middle of down. Martin <laughs> Stadium. Right, right in the middle of the field. With the, during the fly fishing class. They had a fly fishing class. <laughs> In Martin Stadium, the and they field? just practiced on the field to see how long you cast it. I wanted to take oh, it so wow. bad. It sounds like so much fun. That's honestly, awesome. just a just a class that's nothing but a pissing contest. Just oh, a bunch yeah. of people out there. They're like, "Watch me!" My you, friend, you took- know, he was trying to teach stuff in the classroom. They're like, "So when are we gonna go <laughs> cast again? Do we do that?" My favorite thing is my friends took. Uh, they all took bowling together oh, during the school year, so and they're like, Dude. "It's just." The biggest fuck off class because you would go to the bowling alley like across town, so three minutes away because everything's three <laughs> minutes away in Pullman, and then you just be done and like, people would just be drinking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the way you had a bowling alley. Yeah. Like, well, class is over, so we're gonna have a pitcher. Yeah, exactly. I took a badminton class at Shoreline Community College. I don't know if I mentioned this. I went to Shoreline Community College for a year. Oh, uh, this is before pre. Yeah, or, yeah. Okay. I went there my freshman year, and the the badminton class was taught by the pitching coach on the team so he was just like look just show up once a week I don't care like I don't care if you're good at it and then I would just get wailed on by these Vietnamese kids god they were so good at badminton it was unbelievable it was embarrassing Uh, props to you though for going to community college and then actually going to college afterwards badminton yeah did that did that course transfer over did they get the the credit (laughs) did they get the the PE credit I think that Trans- that credit transferred, but like the education classes, I did. I did the actual. Yeah, well, yeah which yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> <fair enough. laughs> like, okay, that's fine. They're like, oh, you ran around for a couple of hours. Sure, we'll give you some here's some fake points. Here's the that. big question: Did you know what you wanted to do when you were in college? I won't. At the time, I wanted to be a teacher. You did, oh. yeah. Oh. Like I went. Like, that was why I was an English major because they didn't have a secondary education major at my school. Oh. So you would major in English and then get your teaching certificate. Yeah. And I like got into the school of education. I did like a student teaching thing for like a semester and just like one day a week hanging out at high school. I was like, no, <laughs> never again. Yeah. This was wrong. This yeah. was totally wrong. Yeah. I just want summers off. That's yeah. been my entire motivation for a career path and maybe I should rethink things. Yeah. I wish I, it's funny how you have like four years to figure it out. And in my case, I spent all that time not figuring it out. Yep. Just like doing ridiculous shit. I'm like, English degree. All right, cool. And I just left with it. <laughs> that's how, that's how I it's kind of what happened. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was too late for me to do anything else. I was kind of like, well, uh, and also I wasn't interested in anything else. So I was like, yeah. well, I guess I'll just finish this up and figure it out. And, you know, I Dude, kind of kind of figured it out. I had a couple of friends <laughs> that, uh, well, I had one friend that graduated for sure and he got a bachelor in general studies. I can't believe you can really do that. You can major in just taking like one of like all sorts of different classes and different majors and like, like specialty areas and then just leave with a bachelor's degree in general studies. <laughs> <That's so dope. laughs> I think we have a liberal arts degree at Seattle U. Really? Yeah. It's about the same thing where you just take English classes yeah, and poetry yeah. classes yeah. and then music classes and just all roll it into one theater i guess yeah just a mixture of mm-hmm. i fucking don't know honestly i met a dude the other day we were he was like hanging out with my roommate and then i was talking about this book and he was like how do you know about books and i was like oh you know I have like an <laughs> how do you English know about books? <laughs> what yeah. kind of sorcerer are you i was like oh you know i have an english degree so like i'm into that and he was like i have an english degree too i've never read anything he was like i've literally <laughs> never read anything and yeah I was like, what do you, what how did you do You're that like, maybe you should and he, yeah, something. yeah, maybe read something. He's like, oh, I just read really slow. He's like, I just, I just, I would rather write a paper than take a test. So I got an English degree, and I was like, oh, so you're those people that they're talking about when they're like, oh, you got an English degree because it was easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, had, I, I worked hard. I had a really, I felt really good about my GPA when I left college, and everyone's like, you got an English degree. It doesn't mean anything. I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> what was your GPA? Uh, it was like a three point. Seven? Wow. Yeah, but I mean, this was English, English in theater classes. <laughs> yeah. Theater classes. And I also took, I TA'd they grade so much. grade theater classes? They grade theater classes, and it's a lot of participation. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. It's pretty much all participation. I, did t- I took major. one acting class in, in college. I got an A minus. Mm. So you weren't participating enough, or you weren't good enough uh, to get an A? I, well, I probably wasn't good enough to get an A, but... Um, my teacher was pretty cool. I was in there with one other soccer player, like he, <laughs> and we were always partners. And he didn't do shit. He was a senior, and I was like a sophomore at the time. And I did everything. We had to rewrite "Waiting for Godot," like make it 
a little bit more. Oh, I th- for a minute there, I thought you were talking about a different language class, and I was like, "That's some heavy shit to be no. writing a different yeah, language." Just, like changing it, yeah. um, and I just Waiting changed for all you that. Made it funny, Chinese basically. Chinese go. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, it is funny, anyways. But and then he forgot his lines all the time. So. Oh yeah, I mean, you can't grade a theater class on if someone's good at acting because oh crap, are lots of people bad? <laughs> like, yeah. that, well, that's because it's the same way with any. Like I think it's the same way with English. Like some people are terrible writers. So what do you measure? Progress? I don't, you know, you can't like you can't grade on talent, but that's definitely a thing you you may or may not have at 19. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. College. We, I'm surprised we've never positive spun college on here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Although I guess it's probably because no one really looks at college as a negative. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe <laughs> yeah. we should positive spin not going to college. I could I could positive spin the shit out of that after going to college. Yeah, yeah I could positive this spin the shit out of not having all this student debt. Yeah, that's like my main thing. I think it's like the main I think thing. You should about. go to community college first. Yeah, that helped honestly. Yeah. Oh god, I'm so glad I went to community college for a year. So did it really like it just did all the prereqs for you pretty much? Pretty much. Um, it really helped me also, and I didn't do this on purpose, but like I got good enough grades in community college because it's community college that I got a bigger academic scholarship when I transferred. Because yeah. I was going to go to Whitworth my freshman year, and then I like last minute for financial and like friend reasons, I wanted to go like play at the shoreline with some of my friends, and so we went there, and then like all of us like f- like one quarter in, we're like, oh, this is not a real baseball team we shouldn't be here and that's why I started working towards the next year and then I yeah that's cool though yeah no I mean oh did you been in Seattle your whole life pretty much Spokane for a little while I lived in Melbourne for like six months what? Melbourne Australia C, C. dude <laughs> As they Melbourne say in Australia, Kansas <laughs> There is a Melbourne, Florida. Oh, really? There yeah. is, yeah. I, I remember seeing that on a map and being like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why are you there? You're not allowed to be near yeah. that. Everyone tells me Australia is the shit. It's pretty cool. Would you go back? Would you oh, live would there gladly, again? Gladly. Gladly. I've been trying to get my work to send me to Sydney. Why were you Why were you there for six months? I, yeah, pretty much. I had a couple of friends who were moving there for their own reasons, and I just kind of didn't have a lot going on i had a job that i liked that i but i knew i didn't want to do forever um and so i just like saved up some money and i hung out with them um it was really i went down there with my friend because he was going to he's like a smart like business guy and he was going to go down and, <laughs> and those. yeah and that have you guys ever heard of thrillist.com i have heard of that website but i don't exactly know what it is like people talk it's about like it. a lot i don't know it's just sort of like a lifestyle guide like go to this restaurant buy this thing Um, but it was kind of like growing in popularity in the states and Australia didn't have anything like that yet so we were basically going to go down there and rip it off and hope to get purchased by Thrillist Mm -hmm. Um, but that was like Harder than we thought, it turns out. Um, And I had no idea what I was doing. And he had to go home a few months in for some reason. Um, And so then I was just there. And then I, so then I just started doing stand up all the time. And I was like, oh, this is what I'm here for. So you did stand up in Australia first? That's cool. I didn't know you did that. Well, I started in Spokane, but like I didn't actually start like, I didn't understand what it took. Like I thought I could just go to an open mic once a week and then eventually I'd be famous. Um, so I, that's what you I and I, works. you and I thought very similarly <laughs> in college. Cause you, did you start in college then? Yeah. Cause I did like stand up in, in like my last year at college and I was just like, I would not have material. I just go up and talk for five minutes yep. and get like two or three laughs in that five minutes and be like, nailed it. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, and then be like, off stage. this summer I got three months. I think I could get on the Adam Carolla show by the end, yeah. of, <laughs> by the end of the summer. Probably I'm killing it right now. This yeah. is great. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I went down there and I lucked out so hard cause I just went to it. You have to like, book open mics down there so I didn't get on stage for like a month until I I I, because I had to book an open mic and I show up for this open mic um that's at some bar the night before the Melbourne International Comedy Festival started oh wow and that anyone can be in the festival you just have to sort of apply and be like we're a venue in the festival so I did an open mic set there and the guy was like uh, we're doing shows here every night for the next month. Uh, we do, we're doing like a late showcase, and we just need people. Will you come back any night and do a set? And I was like, Oh hell yeah! So, so you're a part of Melbourne Comedy yeah. Festival. And so for a month, I got to, and when I really had no right to be, I got to do like <laughs> ten minutes a night. It was dope. that's awesome yeah. though. Yeah, I've in heard front that of people like people will never see again, so I don't even have to feel embarrassed about yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard that comedy festival is like the best. Like everyone talks because like, all the like, the like, whole city. Like a, it's, yeah, it's the whole so cool. thing. Yeah. yeah. That and then like I think that and then like the uh, Scotland Fringe Festival are like the two yeah. big international festivals mm-hmm. to go to. 
Yeah, you should yeah. go if you get the chance. That'd be awesome. You could probably just say you're in it, and if you book a venue from here and you're like, I'm in the festival at this venue, you could probably just say you, because I put that as a credit. I put it as a credit all the time. I was in the Melbourne nice. National Comedy Festival. It doesn't matter that I just showed up and they put me on. But you were in it. I was in it. And Still that means What is your favorite thing about Australia, Go Speed Quiz? Ooh, sushi. Really? Uh, well, okay. So in Australia, the cheapest food you can get is sushi, and it's like you buy it at little like you know storefronts on the street, and it's like a burrito. Like they don't cut it up; it's just like a burrito. It's just like a tuna roll, you know, in one long, and then they give you a little tiny fish-shaped package full of soy sauce that you squirt on top, and then you just walk down the street and you eat your sushi like a burrito. And I wish we had that here. Holy shit! Right? You're blowing I minds. I already like have always wanted to go to Australia, but now I don't know if I'd ever oh, come to, back. Go to Melbourne. It's sweet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Plus, the thing is Melbourne too. It's not yeah, Melbourne. They don't say they're ours. Yeah. Yeah. The other cool thing about Australia is they're very much like, ah, oh, you're an adult. Do whatever you want. Like, <laughs> like yeah. there's all these oh, signs shit. that are like, no drinking at the beach, and everyone's drinking at the beach. Well, nobody... I had friends that are from Perth, and they mm-hmm. were saying that. Like Australia Day, it's like huge, like way yeah. bigger than Fourth of July. Like everybody goes down to the beach and mm-hmm. like it's this huge thing. And then they said, like one year they were like, "There's no drinking at the beach. You can't do it." And then like no one went. <laughs> like it was just like that was the one thing they were like, "Well, then we'll just stay we'll home just and drink." Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> also, they go buck wild for Easter. Really? Because it's, really? like, it's like right at the end of their summer. Man, oh. I've never seen a collection of drunker people than my roommates on Easter. Because it's like you get, <laughs> for some reason, you get Friday and Monday off in Australia for Easter, and they spent Friday through Monday being Just the hammered. drunkest <laughs> people I've ever seen in my life. Awesome. Like I left for work uh, in the morning, and they were still drunk from the night before. And I came back in the afternoon, and they were all still up. And now there was just like a shattered keyboard spread across the house. Jesus. Yeah, it was bad. So, what did you do for work <laughs> when you were there? I, was that working on that thrillist? You sell your body. Yeah. <laughs> Sold uh, <laughs> parts. Uh, now I worked at a cafe for a while, and at the time I was like, I was an in, I was a, an intrepid young businessman, and I owned an ATM in Seattle, and so I had money coming in from the ATM, and I was working like 10, 15 hours a week doing. You owned jobs. an ATM. I owned an ATM. What? Yeah. How do you do that? I I mean I just I went out and I bought one because I so. We'll go back. Before I moved to Australia, I was working. Uh, I was helping my friend run his hookah bar on Capitol Hill. Um, what was it called? The Cobra Lounge. I totally been there lots of times. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I used to. You probably saw me in there. I used to like. I was there almost every night. Weird. Yeah. Really weird. Um, Ooh. Yeah. And so he and we were cash only. And so he was like, "If you just buy an ATM and put it in here, like I'm fine with that. You can uh, just yeah, use it." That makes yeah. Sense. Yeah. So then, when they closed, you were like. Yeah, I sold it. I don't do any more ATM. Yeah, which is too bad because that's dope. Oh my god, you just really print money. Is that so? <laughs> it just prints this money. <laughs> How much does an ATM cost? I spent, I think I spent twelve hundred dollars on it, which is not a lot of money. But then what you got to think about is then you have to put like three grand in it if you want if you don't want to have to come back and fill it up every other day. Uh, oh. So you have to have some money. Um, my parents were cool and they let me borrow some cash to put in it and then I was able to pay them off really fast because it's like, it just, it prints, you just sit there and it makes money for you. It's great. Oh, that's man. an amazing can't machine. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah, that's that is, a fantastic. Yeah. And you just had an agreement with the person so it's like in their bar. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Because he was cool wonder. with it because he didn't have to do any of the work and it was easier for, it was like people are more likely to stay if they don't have to leave to get cash. So it was like good for his business. So just be like, there's an ATM right there. Yeah. How much was your surcharge? How much was it? 250 Oh, that's, that's bad. not bad. That's yeah. not bad at all. Well, the, cause the, well my, my argument, anytime someone was like, oh, 250 I'd be like, well, you can walk three blocks up to the nearest ATM, which is the Bank of America for 350 So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're Shut undercutting. Yeah. The, you're undercutting the man right now. Yeah, fuck you, Bank of America. I'm, I have never you're met like, anyone that owned an ATM. That's such a good idea. Yeah, you have, it's Brent. Yeah. Well, I now just I didn't know, know Brent. it. That's me, baby. Yeah. That's you. He's, if you guys don't know, he just did his money dance. <laughs> <laughs> he would do every time he uh, refills it's the me, ATM. Baby. Fill it's up. me, baby. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, what is that guy doing? I didn't even think cool. about that. Like, you're like, you gotta fill it with money. Mm-hmm. There's some guy that just does that. That's just some dude's job. Yeah. It's so weird. The most recent thing that happened with the ATM that me is that one of them ate my card at a Wells Fargo, and then the lady came and like actually opened it up, and I saw like the inside of it. I'm like, that 
It's a fancy looking machine. Did it blow your mind. Yeah, it's so and she cool. also had about thirty so debit cool. cards that the machine had eaten, and she's like, "Which one's your name?" And she <laughs> and she was like shuffling through them, and I'm like, "People are just probably like, on the top." Yeah. Uh, and here's my ID. Top <laughs> so, or bottom? Yeah. <laughs> I'll just take them all. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> That's crazy though. So that was that when you had an ATM, you were in Australia. Yeah. And so, what made you come back? Uh, uh, mostly a girl. <gasps> yeah. So I started oh. dating someone like right before I moved there. there I want to let you guys know I made an ah noise and Monica shook her head defiantly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how this podcast relationship I felt works. like you had a good setup going and then you <laughs> blew it. No. Uh, Just kidding. A girl I was trying to kill. Um, <laughs> trying to manipulate <laughs> oh, and did eliminate. Did you think we were dating? No, I wanted no, no, to murder no, her. That's why I want to come her down and end her life. <laughs> Manipulate and eliminate. Brent, <laughs> Brent worked as the nicest hitman in the world. <laughs> hey, good hey, to see it's you. just for the money. I'm sorry. <laughs> he just comes back and he, I, lo- I sold my hide, ATM. I will tell them you're dead. Like <laughs> you just hide. <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna relocate you to Kansas. Just okay, pay you, pal. I got I'll you. pay for it. Don't worry. I'll pay you for they it. They gave me some money. I'll, I, I'll relocate you. I got you a job at Dairy Queen. It's no big deal. We're, I, I, you I, I bought you an ATM and you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're Margaret now. Okay. You're Margaret. <laughs> oh man. Well, that's uh, <laughs> that's such a weird. That you did a lot then when you were young. Yeah, kinda. I mean, I went through. I think I went through a, a period after I graduated where I did nothing for like a year, and then I kind of made up for lost time where I was like, no, I, I run a hookah bar and I live in Australia now, <laughs> and now I'm back, and then I got a job, and it's kind of been the same ever since. That's nice though. <laughs> yeah. How old are you? Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Like some people are I guess I should like preface that question some people aren't cool with that question I guess Duh. yeah some people that makes some people real uncomfortable yeah which I'm care. like I don't care either. like some people that like uh, for what I notice is the people I don't ask are people that hide it on Facebook when it's their birthday mm-hmm. that's how I know I'm like oh they're not cool with aging yeah. so that's good to know yeah. Yeah. well who's really cool with well, aging I, I feel love like it. it helps that I I have received some feedback lately that I look younger than 29 so you I do. feel fine being like I'm 29 you do you look younger than 29 Thanks. you look like a ripe 17 year old so lumberjack man so much. she had a work event I was, I was like talking to a young lady for a while and then I was like, I'm like oh I'm 29 and she like like you know did like a double take she was like what and I was like thank you <laughs> like, yeah, I saw what like, just boop. happened uh, I drink lots of water I moisturize uh. <laughs> so when I work with the kids I would always ask them because they'd be like how old are you I'd be like how old do you think I am Ooh. and it would either go really low mm-hmm. like 16 <laughs> or they'd be like 40 and I'm like fuck <laughs> you like either way this is not working out no, for me no you can't it's, it's a tough game for anyone really because if, if anyone ever said like I don't know 32 I'd be like Ugh. <laughs> yeah, right. which isn't even that far no. off but you're like no <laughs> Yeah, it's not. No, I look like I'm 24 forever. <laughs> I'll never 20, get old. I feel like 24. I feel like you want to look like 30 forever. 30 is a good age. I don't know. I feel know, like I I feel 26. Like, I was going to say, I feel like my age is like, it's only downhill now. Damn it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wasn't even that far up the hill, I feel like. God. You know, <laughs> right yeah. now it's turning like, around. No. Yeah. Turning around. Uh, I feel my body just falling apart slowly. It sucks. Dude, I hurt my. I just ba- stopped, and my friends. I was like, "You guys go on without me. I'm gonna just start going back down." Okay. <laughs> go on without me. Um, I hurt my back spinning Kevin like a figure skater. So now my age is uh, <laughs> my age is really hitting me right it's really now. Caught yeah, up I picked him up, and then he like like wrapped his legs around me and leaned back like we were gonna do the spin move on the ice. But he leaned back too far, and I'm like, my back is like I can't handle it. And it just was like gone. And then I was like, thought it was okay. Like two days later, there was no pain at all. I'm like, I am a Wolverine healing machine. And I felt really good and then I was at Tacoma Comedy Club and I bent over to turn on a heater fan and I'm like oh it's out again oh crap oh jeez oh no like it just all hurt itself that's the one when it's something stupid and it goes out you're like I need to make some life changes yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're my back out picking up the laundry basket and I'm like nope staying down here I guess this is uh... I, when, when I hurt my back I like well, I did the old WebMD thing which was a bad idea don't but don't ever do that Mayo Clinic is better but my least favorite thing <laughs> my least favorite thing that right. I said is a lot of people throw their lower back out by sneezing or coughing and I'm like oh my god like so just like I think my body does is gonna permanently hurt my body afterward (laughs) it's terrible I I go into a dusty room and then my back doesn't work (laughs) sounds terrible Um, okay this is a thing that I wanted to ask you about Mm -hmm. and this is like really has I I guess it's, it's you so this is interesting when did you start playing baseball 
Because that's like a big, that was a big part of your life. That's like. Yeah. Th- I want to say when I was, I mean, T-ball, probably five. I was going to say, five. I feel like baseball is a sport that you start really early. Even yeah. early. Yeah. 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 Like I started playing basketball in first grade. So I don't really know. Yeah. But honestly, I know for that as long I played as I baseball remember. before that. Yeah. So. Yeah. I feel like that's the first one they get you started. Like everybody starts T-ball. Like this day. is America. Yeah. <laughs> Here, still, still here, past time. Here, we'll hold it for you for yeah. a while. Yeah. It's easy, and you're like, no, I don't want to play. And then we'll feed you <laughs> gently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I hit it. I'm gonna run around all the bases. I don't give a shit what everybody else is doing. <laughs> you're like, the ball has been out of play for a while. <laughs> Made it all I, the way. I was pretty bad at baseball. I mean, any any ball it's sport, pretty good. Really? <laughs> what, were you good at wrestling or something? No, wasn't good at either. I'm good at all sports. <laughs> really theater good. sport. Theater really sport. Good. I didn't. I didn't do theater until I was in college. So I was really, really just not good so at anything. You, yeah, what, did you, what did you do in high school? Trying to help I you. tried to be good at sports, uh-huh. and then I played lots of video games in my downtime okay, and computer okay. stuff. Yeah. What was your game? What was the one that you lost the most time into? You played Warcraft? No, I did not play War. I did oh, not really? play World of Warcraft. I, lot, I saw, yeah, I saw, <laughs> I saw a lot of my friends lose their high school lives to that game, and I was like, I'm not doing it. Played a lot of the uh, the old uh, the old Elder Scrolls games, the old Morrowind mm. games in high school, mm. and then I played a lot of N64 still. Like that was yeah. like. I played N64 until well past people were still playing that just to the console because <laughs> I was really into Super Smash Brothers and Tony X Pro Skater 1 Tony X Pro Skater 1 that's a great game 2 is so much better what there's actual like level I don't know the levels are big enough that you can play around in them Tony X Pro Skater 2 is dope and four, and also Thug which is great. Has the Thug, better soundtrack. The underground? Yeah. Ooh, that's a great question. You know, it has the better soundtrack as uh, Thrasher Skate and Destroy, which was a different skateboarding video game that was way better than Tony Hawk One and had a way better soundtrack, but it didn't have Tony Hawk's name, so it never really popped <laughs> off. Thrashers? <laughs> yeah, it was called Thrasher Sk- Skate and Destroy. It had the. It seriously, it, I would listen I to that soundtrack this. now. Did you guys skateboard? No. 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 I, Did you? I mean, I had a skateboard that I would like goof around on, but I wasn't really a skateboarder. I like s- I it's like a so middle school I, thing for us. I, I played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, and then there was a song on there actually called Superman by Goldfinger, and mm-hmm. I bought the CD, and I fell in love with it, and then as a kid, I got on a skateboard and started skating around, and my brother said, and this, I remember this, was like, did you really just listen to that song, and now you're going to start skateboarding? <laughs> and then I never skateboarded again. <laughs> Oh, Frank. Yep, that's what Frankles did. Frankles hit me pretty hard. <laughs> hit me pretty hard yeah, in the heart. That was strings. it. You were like, okay, I'm and you're done. like, good point. One okay, I just put it yep. away, and yeah, I went back inside that. and played more video games. That's, that is why I didn't buy into boy bands because Moshin was like, no, you can't do that, and I was like, okay, not doing it. I guess <laughs> it's funny the pressure that then. older siblings put. You have siblings? Yeah, one older, one younger. He was a lot older than me, though. I feel like you and Frank are so close that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been. I looked all up all my to friends Frank that were within like three years. Hear me, Frankles. I love you. <laughs> He's not listening. Within like three years, they they more argued and wanted to be different than each other than than wanted to listen. But because Marshall was so much older than me, I was like, Ooh, okay. Yeah, Frank yeah. and I, I did get very different, though. That's true. So that's, uh, yeah, I was always trying yeah. to separate from my yeah. brothers. Yeah. At the same time, though, I went to Washington State University because Frank was at Washington State University. I had no other reason wanting to go I, I did not I did not plan at all college I did not do scholarships just, that's like, my mom's I'll like do that too because we were at the assembly where everyone was getting their like scholarships at the end of this like your senior year and I'm like oh I wish I could have like won some of these and my mom's like you have to apply for them I'm like uh, no one told me that. You yeah. <laughs> were just like I thought they were just handing them out. Yeah, I thought you like earned them for being really <laughs> cool. I thought people found you for scholarships. Yeah, I, did not I, I that didn't get recruited for the for the for the t- ITT Tech <laughs> scholarship. No, I, like, I got no. some like military scholarship. I was really? like, I see what you guys are doing, but no, how about that? Wait, yeah, was you, like a you turned it down? Yeah, well, you would have just, had to join the Marines. Yeah, you have oh, to go gotcha. to a military school, and it was. I, they, it was a lot of athletes that they ended up But they came and found you? To. You didn't apply for it? Yeah. It was wow. just And there was quite a few, I don't know. At the end of the year, you know, they name off yeah. all the things, and that was... Were you like a super high school baller? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Were you all state? All state? Yeah. Sure. Were you? Yeah. That's I led cool. the state in scoring. One what? Year. One year. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would never stop mentioning that. No. I'm surprised you haven't said that <laughs> I would to me never before. Stop mentioning I have 12 that. varsity letters. I feel like I'm more proud what? of that than what? anything that Wait, happened. Wait, what were the three sports you played? I played golf. Okay, I didn't, didn't I see that coming. It was, I think, no. It was almost player of the year, my senior year, for golf. But the girl that 
was like really good and I like won like an LPGA tournament like <laughs> a couple years ago I was like all right fine you have it <laughs> yeah, um, uh, basketball and then I played track played track did track yeah you played some did, track sure I threw javelin at some that point and I event? jumped yeah javeler? I got I got two Is that letters what they call them, right javelers Javelers. Javelers? All right, sprinters over there, javelers <laughs> over there. <laughs> Discus eye. Did you, uh, you got 12 letters? How many letters did you get, Brent? I bet you I am the loser here. Two. I got two. Woo. But this is how I lose. One of them was for senior year football. Okay. 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 The other one was for managing the gymnastics Ooh. team. <laughs> That's 100% yeah. real. Yeah, I wouldn't even tell people I, I did to. not. <laughs> I did not get a jacket. <laughs> I did not get a, anything. Oh, sorry. It, I'm sorry. Monica just like laughed and leaned oh, back. That's funny. And, you know, I, that's how I it, like that. I feel like uh, that was, was my life. I about that the other day. And that, like, <laughs> I like it when dudes are like, you know, I support women in sports and I'm going to be your guys' manager. Like, we had like a couple of male managers when I played basketball. It was yeah, me and my cool. buddy yeah. Eric and they're like we just need people to move mats around and we're like okay and then we got t-shirts that said Gina sticks on them and no one got in trouble for that and we wore those all the time. <laughs> G-I-N-A-S-T-I-X Gina sticks. No one said anything. And no one said anything and we just wore them all the time That's and then great. At, at the end of the year like, pizza we party We need them to move the mats so we're just <laughs> not going to say anything. At the end of the year pizza party thing when like everyone would get like a gift I got an old country buffet gift card because those ladies knew what I I loved. Okay. Market research. That's Still amazing. friends with all them on Facebook. No big deal. Did you Did you win any of like the the Hall of Fame at the end of the year? Were you like nicest or anything? You know I won I mean? sweetest Sweet. in my yeah. in my high school yearbook. I was male sweetest. And this is kind of embarrassing. I won best personality. That's a good so, one. It is, but it's like that's weird. Like, people why people couldn't get... find good things to say about you, and they're like, he has a He's good got good personality. personality. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's that's actually what my grandpa won in, uh, and he was like. ASB president and all that crap. Vice president. Yeah. How do you, wow, you know about your... They had ASB presidents at, when your grandpa was in school? Yeah. I didn't think that that... I thought that was a, a product of the 80s. What is it called? Class... I don't know. It was called something different. Yeah, you were yeah. just like class president. Yeah. yeah. But... And then my grandma won like... Well, it said best looks. Whoa. Right? She's the hottest. Yeah. Hey. Grandma's a babe. I was most athletic. I, no, no, no. No. I won more than one category. Excuse me. Sorry. Whoa. Uh, you were so superlative I, I took, in more than one. Right? I took class clown. You took it. Yeah, because I didn't. I oh, the guy who won most athletic, I didn't like. Mm -hmm. Like I really didn't like him. Mm -hmm. So I was like, the other guy who won class clown was a good friend of mine. And I was like, oh, that'd be way more fun to yeah. have a picture with one of your best friends. Mm -hmm. So I took class clown. Oh, so you got to choose one. Yeah, I was friends with the yearbook people, and they were like, you won these ones. Which one do you want? Oh, because I feel like they picked for us, because somebody else won Class Clown, and I'm still kind of butthurt. Okay, yeah. I don't yeah. even remember who won Class Clown. <laughs> just all not let it go. Like, Who's yeah. a Class Clown now? Huh? <laughs> I went to my, not my actual 10-year reunion, because I had a show, but I went and I met up with some kids <laughs> at a bar later, and this this is very, what we were talking about is so real, because this kid was telling me about how, remember you were like, remember in, eight, in seventh grade when I won Funniest, and then like you in eighth grade, you won, and I was like, what? The fuck? Like, no, I don't remember that, but of course you do. People hold on to yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so interesting to see what people remember. Yeah. And then other things that you're like, I have no idea what yeah, you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we got to get to our positive spin topic, and okay. it's Monica's topic. She picked this one. Don't put Let's that on me spin. like that. But well, it was Monica's. Well, well no, I mean, I mean that you're gonna take. Minute. I mean, you're gonna take the reins <laughs> on this. Spin narcissism. Let's go. <laughs> I'm saying you're gonna take the reins on this. It was your idea, and I sure. want you to do it. I feel like this is the time of year uh, when this and and with political debates as well. But uh, with the Let's positive spin, political, political, political correctness. So being PC. Okay. And why What's it's good. good about it, yeah. Um, you don't hurt people's feelings, usually. Okay, well, let's talk about what maybe would be the devil's advocate to it. Why people don't like it first. If you, well, so we okay. can counter that. You okay, know okay, I mean? we'll start with what people don't like about it. I think people are, is it, is it making people too sensitive? I think people just don't like to be told what to do. Yeah, I think that's, that's what it all comes down to. Oh. 
it all boils down to people being like, I say what I want to say when I want to say it. And yeah. they take that to an extreme to yeah. the point where they look like idiots. I don't have to change anything about myself. It's the world that needs exactly. to change. And that's why I'm, and that's why I'm like, okay with PC because I'm like, yeah. oh, if it's just, if you're making someone, if you're not hurting someone's feelings, then it's fine. Right. I think, okay, the one thing I was thinking about uh, why it might not be a good thing is that now everyone's so PC we're all supposed to know mm-hmm. what is uh, like what makes people feel uncomfortable and what, I think there's obvious things like slurs and whatnot like mm-hmm. that's pretty obvious don't do that yeah. but there's all these new terms and whatnot and so I think we're almost losing the ability to just say what you want mm-hmm. you know what I mean like yeah. if you want to be called something just tell me that and then I'll respect that yeah. but because you're like well you should fucking know that yeah. and I'm like I don't and I think that I'm that's sorry that's I'm not going to talk like, anymore there's definitely definitely um, dumb people on both sides of yeah. the spectrum oh, yeah, of this absolutely. argument 100%. and the dumb people on that on the P- the PC side are the kind who yeah just expect you to know these things as opposed to just being like hey for future reference I'm calling someone a retard maybe not okay anymore. yeah maybe maybe not good Brian Cook has a funny joke where he's he mentions uh, he's like instead of spending your energy to calling uh, manhole covers person hole covers it's like that it's like <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's like focus your energy in the right direction it's like yeah obviously we're not supposed to say racial slurs now yeah. do we really have to sit there and expect this person to know what they're supposed to say you just need to tell them yeah mm-hmm. like, yeah definitely so but uh, and be Brian cool Cook reference. It. Brian Cook reference. Um, with this, I don't know. I was thinking about this mostly because of Donald Trump. Like, I can't, you can't not really. I want so badly not to think about him, but it's uh, it's haunting me. It's everywhere. And every it's and everyone. Yeah. I feel like, um, but it, oh, that was that's we haven't talked about that. But I got blocked for the first time on Twitter. Ooh, what'd you do? Ooh, yeah. This lady was it a was, crazy lady. <laughs> It was ridiculous, actually. And I'm dumb. So um, <laughs> it was like the night of or maybe the day after the Paris attacks. Yeah. And I was just kind of going through some of Twitter. And this woman was just going after people. She was Armenian and um, really held some of the things that happened during that genocide against the whole Muslim community in general. Mm -hmm. And so she was just going off saying like anyone who's Muslim is a terrorist. They're trying to kill people. They're taught to kill people. Like that's what it was. And so I was just kind of watching it and she's arguing with a lot of people and that kind of thing. And then I can't even remember, but she worded something. It was just a lack of grammar Yeah, that made. (laughs) And you saw your moment. (laughs) Right. It was like one of the prophets. He was like, I forget what she said. But basically, I was like, it was "Wait!" Like a, it was all grammar too. It yeah, has nothing it had to do nothing with their to argument. Do with like the argument, um, and I was just like, "It was basically like so." If I'm like, um, "Well, we were gonna do the thing," but then fucking Bryce was whatever. I, yeah. All I hear is "but fucking Bryce." Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that—that <laughs> yeah. that was basically what it was. So that's all I tweeted was like, "Wait." there's butt fucking like that was it (laughs) and then like a bunch of people were tweeting me back and it wasn't like bad Mm -hmm. but then she (laughs) her only response was um (laughs) you had to put stand-up comedian in your bio because no one knows who the fuck you are and i just responded yeah that's totally true actually that's why it says that in there (laughs) that's why everyone's bio has a bio right, on exactly. Twitter you well, fucking idiot it was funny idiot. because Chad saw it and he was watching the whole Chad Denick saw it and was watching the whole thing and he goes and looks at her bio immediately and he's like you should put your nationality in there because it said like Armenian that was it and then the next thing she does is deletes her <laughs> bio and then blocks me <laughs> Yeah, She's this lady. In fear now. This, She's yeah, this, hiding no, her this story. Lady, <laughs> solid move though to be like, yeah. "Hey, fuck you, loser! Block! You can't say anything back." <laughs> yeah, yeah it, that's like all Twitter fighting is. It's so. Funny have you ever to blocked me. anyone? I have not blocked anyone, <laughs> but I've muted some people. Oh, I've <laughs> muted some people. I've too. muted lots. Oh, yeah, of, I, I, it feels good. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I haven't muted as many people as I have like on Facebook, but I haven't blocked anyone yet. Mm. Dude, I should mute some people on Twitter. I didn't. Yeah, know it's that. so dope. Muting is pretty awesome. I found out when someone was like accidentally revealed to me that that he had muted me and I was like wait <laughs> teach me how to do that and I won't be mad I don't care <laughs> yeah because yeah if someone that you just mute them back yeah. the only thing I get upset about on Twitter genuinely is when I follow someone that I know like we're people mm-hmm. we talk occasionally yeah and they follow me and then I follow them back and then they unfollow me like Weird. to try to get that's, someone that's the only thing that bothers you on Twitter yeah that's good yeah the I like racism obviously the blanketed I mean, racism the blanketed was kind of racism, my thing I guess but the, um, the uh the blanketed racism all that stuff that's okay it's just that's just life that's just part of life but the follow unfollow bullshit yeah that's rude <laughs> it was uh, 
I don't know. So that's not even a question of real political correctness. I feel like you are genuinely just going after a group of people. That's yeah. yeah that's just like, that's just her being. But, it's hate speech. And then, yeah, that's just hate that's speech. Some people some people hide behind <laughs> hate speech and they're like, oh, PC police are trying to tell me <laughs> that I can't kill all the Muslims. Or the, the funniest part about her that I remember reading is she said so many times, "I've been researching this for ten years, and in no well, way, it, shape, or form did it say I have a PhD or I have a master's <laughs> degree no, or was, I have a bachelor's degree." She's basically, she's she she like, "I've read the Quran," and I, that, that's why. I, I wasn't going to argue with her about anything and yeah. I was just watching this whole thing, you know, and I've never read the Quran, I don't yeah. know. Um, but then, of course, if you, I mean, accidentally say there was butt fucking, I'm going <laughs> to gonna point it out. Can't let that pass. You, you can't, was, can't let that go. Pretty it's much true. It. No, but that's so true. Like, if you're going to be like a, like a, just a, uh, what's the word? Just like a terrible person on the internet and just like spew your opinions. Just keep the grammar tight. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you that's know, right. like that, like that seems like such a basic, like, okay, if I'm going to personally, I feel like if I'm going to, if I'm going to write a tweet, that's even like a little bit mean, I'm going to make sure my grammar and my spelling, spelling is on right. point. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that if nothing else, they have to deal with the argument. My, and not my favorite, it. my favorite thing is when someone writes something really offensive or hateful on Twitter and they do that thing where, where it's clearly not going to fit in 140 characters, so they start like putting U, the letter U, to the U, right, and, and they start like, shortening everything, so it just looks like an idiot's rambling like crap. And I'm like, this is amazing. Like, yeah, this is not the medium for you. This you haven't not, figured it out. You got to get your Facebook. You got to get a Facebook like page, buddy. <laughs> and then uh, all the kind of backlash of that tweet afterwards, because there was other people that saw it. I was just like. No, I was just wondering, like, I've never read the Quran. Is yeah, that in there? You know, like, is there. it because maybe I want to read it yeah. now? I don't know. Like, you know, and that's all it was. I was like, nope, not trying to be offensive. Just really wanted to know. Were there people who responded to uh -huh. you? Like, oh, yeah. fuck you. It was like apparently some very conservative guy that was a friend of hers. Mm -hmm. And he was like, he said something to me. And then I was like, oh, no, I was just, you know, trying to clarify. And he's like, oh, yeah, she's not that bad. Like, <laughs> he goes, I'll tell her to unblock she's you. I was like, I really don't give a yeah, shit. Yeah, but I never want to meet this person in real life or speak to them ever yeah this, this person's a crazy person i got blocked once and i'm still this is such a mystery to me i don't know why and i also i'm not even sure how i figured it out does it say if it blocks you no well i just happened yes. to like well it doesn't say you're blocked but it says you're not this is how i knew is because i went to look at her page again after that and it says like you don't have access to this yeah, person's tweet like you can't see any of their tweets oh you still, or respond you can still search for that yeah, so you, you can, can see her profile, but person. all her tweets, are, it just says, like, you're not allowed to see these. <laughs> That's interesting. It is weird. One time I just, I thought like... That also, I thought that meant also someone's, like, set to private, too. It could be that, also. Well, I can't... No, it definitely mm -hmm. wasn't, because she was still... Well, you know, it out. says specifically, it's like, you specifically are not allowed to uh, see Yeah, and I tried to... Oh, versus this user's set to private. Yeah. I tried to respond to something that she was like tagged in still and it was it wouldn't let me like send the tweet like you can't tweet at them either so okay well i can't find this person whatever. anymore yeah whatever that but one day there was <laughs> i mean i don't i saw I'm i read her because i was just lurking like i always do on the internet and just reading everything <laughs> and i'm like this lady <laughs> is yeah is clearly just she was off was, her rocker like just nuts some people just I'm amazed. I'll look. I'll do that on Twitter too. Sometimes when like something wild I happens, just yeah, I'll just kind of like flip through <laughs> and be like, "What people? Why? Why? Like, it's one thing to have those beliefs, but you can't just sit on them. You have to put them on the internet for everyone. Oh yeah, gross. Yeah, Delilah <laughs> disagrees with hate speech. Yeah. You guys, <laughs> Delilah's gonna block that lady on Twitter. You go, girl. <laughs> She's like meow 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 meow. <laughs> we gotta take the quiz. We gotta take the quiz. Yeah. It's 52 minutes right now. We're, this really? is flying by. Oh man, I have a good it's good. top five turnaround. Do you want to do the top five turnaround and not do a quiz? Because I'm fine with that. No. What's the top five no. turnaround? The top what five was the quiz? The quiz was, uh, it was the, was the Mean, mean Girls, Girls one. one. We can save the Mean Girls one and then do well, and do the top five turnaround because you have this ready to go. Top five turnaround is where she has five things and you and I have to positive spin them together. Like okay. we're working as a team. Gonna okay. Be kind of okay. Tough. These okay. are going to be tough. You ready? Let's but warm up our shoulders. Yeah. Let's get our shoulders into it. I thought. Okay, so this actually is perfect for what we were just talking about. I thought it was appropriate for being politically correct, but this is specifically about Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> the Twitter. We're on yeah, Twitter. I laughed at that before nobody. 
Everybody has to. Okay, well, this is top five social media disasters of well known companies. Okay. So this, oh, this is, is going to be when funny. They, yeah, it was, it was fun to read. So I'm positive okay. spinning all so of these disasters. Is, yeah, we got to find a so bright we side PR for them. We got to help them. these companies. Yeah, if we're PR. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, all right, right. So you guys man. work for fun. Gap on this one. Great. Gap. Okay. Uh, this is during Hurricane Sandy. Okay. Love it already. They tweeted, all impacted by hashtag Sandy, stay safe. We'll be doing lots of Gap.com shopping today. How about you? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like hey, there's a hurricane. You I can't go outside. Hurricane, you should just do some online shopping. But at least right. you have the internet connection to handle it. Think of it this way. Gap sells umbrellas. Gap sells raincoats. Mm. Gap sells probably <laughs> heaven cotton or canvas garments that you could make sandbags out of. They're trying to, we're just, we're trying you to help. You can make sandbags. You could, it, and the, you order it online so they'll bring it to they'll you. Bring, you don't see, have to worry about going if I If I worked for Gap.com, I'd be like, um, we meant that for people throughout the United States to order those items and donate to them. And then I would try to spin it and be like, here's our donation button that you can click. Oh, and then like, you buy good. something and then you just that's donate That's how you it. fix it. That's good. That's right. That's how you do it. I don't think it needs to be fixed. I, just, I think it was great to I begin. I just love how... <laughs> and Brent's hired. <laughs> Sometimes some of these I feel like like the wrong person had access to the company's Twitter account. <laughs> well, um, you know, it was just some like 25 year old who they were like, you know what, you, you know what Twitter is? You're yeah, hired. Yeah. yeah, this is fine. Um, okay, during the 2012 presidential debates, uh, KitchenAid, the, uh, you know, kitchen people, mm-hmm. uh, tweeted, Obama's grandma even knew it was going to be bad. That's why she died three days before he became president. <laughs> KitchenAid said that? Kitchen yes, and then it just says hashtag NBC politics. <laughs> and then their next tweet is like, deepest apologies for our <laughs> <laughs> That had to be a guy who ran their Twitter that had both Twitters on his phone. Like he could switch between his personal one De- oh. and his kitchen and like the kitchen aid one. And, and he might yeah, and he yeah. might have done the KitchenAid one right, when he yeah. meant to do the personal one, and he's like, oh fuck. Like, I don't just, have a job. <laughs> yeah. So that's I know some like radio show hosts that also have access to like the radio's Twitter, mm-hmm. and so I could see that. Happening. Yeah, like, you, you just switch accounts real quick; you don't even realize it. I gotta figure out which ones are my favorite. Uh, positive but. spin. Uh, Buy a KitchenAid. <laughs> <laughs> Look, clearly, clearly a rude thing to say, but like as far as jokes go, it's like an okay, like an okay. good thing his grandma died. Like you know, you know he's uh, he's working, he's <laughs> workshopping. We really we care about. Good our, thing his grandmother died. Yeah, we care about our our employees. I work for KitchenAid. We care about employees. <laughs> uh, you know, lives outside of work, and he's an aspiring Twitter personality. And you know, he got things mixed up. We don't want to. We don't want to throw him on the cross, but <laughs> throw him on the cross. There you go. <laughs> fix fix won't. your insensitive tweet with like just Christianity references. You're like, don't. He's not Jesus. No, he's Fucking fine. take. Him. All right. This one is from Epicurious, which is like a food recipe. It's all food related. Uh, <laughs> no gap is not. Food. Yeah. Um, this yeah, is food. Right after the Boston uh, Boston Marathon. Uh, bomb pressure mm-hmm. cooker thing. <laughs> it's not funny, but they have two in a row, which is like they did one and they were like, yeah, that's fine. Uh, the first one is uh, Boston, our hearts are with you. Here's a bowl of breakfast energy we could all use to start the day. What and then it's the like, like the link to a recipe. <laughs> Oh no! And then the next one, which is only thirty minutes later, is in honor of Boston and New England. May we suggest whole grain cranberry scones? Oh my god! <laughs> you know, at a time like this, when depressing things happen, I get constipated, which is why we offered everyone these whole grain scones to keep them regular. <laughs> I, yeah, that's, that's so bad. terrible. That is so next, bad. next one. I know next that was one. Tough. Okay. <laughs> this one because the cranberries are like running the wounds out of time, in so your we... body <laughs> this one just reminds me of like a shitty open micer joke that's okay so after the whole Ray Rice thing there was some hashtags that started for just domestic violence um, like sharing of stories mm-hmm. there was why I stayed and why I left um, and DiGiorno <laughs> <laughs> like where does this oh, guy get out? Yeah. It just says it just says sort of, it's not hashtag why I stayed you had pizza <laughs> 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 
<laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh god! Well, <laughs> our pizza is so good; it's worth worth getting it's punched in the punch face. <laughs> 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 and we stand by that. We stand by the product. Maybe not the tweet, but we stand, stand by, by the, the product, product that yeah. led to the tweet because it's true. It's great <laughs> pizza. It's not delivery. It's domestic violence. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the last one? Okay, this one is... This is so terrible. Okay, after the Sandy Hook shooting. Sorry. Uh, our th- this is Kmart. Our thoughts and prayers are with the victims of this ter- terrible tragedy, which is totally fine. And then it says, hashtag pray for Newtown, hashtag Connecticut shooting, hashtag Fab 15 toys. What? <laughs> so the last, the last hashtag in there is some marketing. Also... Like, do you need a hashtag Connecticut? Like, what did it... Hold on, what were all three of them? CT shooting is what CT, it was. It yeah. was pray for need, Newtown. Because that's CT Kmart shooting. being like, well, we, we need people to see this. I feel like they were like, how do we get this hashtag in here? Okay, we'll throw them off the trail with guys, two that guys, are real. I mean, hasn't Kmart suffered enough? They don't exist anymore. Really. <laughs> out, of, out of all the ones we read, that was the nicest actual tweet part. Like, right. they were like, our thoughts are with people, but... Especially, I'm, I guarantee... Again, it's like putting the marketing thing at the end. Like, because they say, like, condolences, don't forget to buy this. It's like such a dumb what are, wait, thing to Fab do. 15? Fab, Fab 15 toys, which apparently... How many of them there. do you think were guns? How many of those toys do you think were guns? I'm All gonna say Nerf three. guns. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, just, just, <laughs> mm. There's an onion one on here, which I was very disappointed by the person who wrote this article because I was like, that's satire, guys. Yeah. Like, stop yeah. It. Oh, someone pointed it. What? <laughs> it was... <laughs> Yeah, it just said, can we all agree that this person is a cunt, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the onion. They can do whatever they want. All right. Anyways, that Charity was fun. time. We're out of time. You guys did pretty good. Monica, go. Charity, go oh, for charity. Sorry. Monica, uh, go. Go for charity. Go well, for charity. one, the Donald Trump thing really does bother me, especially the whole let's not let Muslims into the country. So if you. Um, aren't a fan of Donald Trump and are tired of hearing him, which I am, whoever you're voting for, I honestly don't care. You can just donate to their campaign. Like, that was my first thought. Smart. Like, I honestly, like, out of all the Republicans, I think Marco Rubio isn't uh, that dumb. So if you're still on that side, maybe give him a little cash. Hillary, Bernie, I don't care. Maybe go check out how you can help them so we can stop listening to him. Um, and then I did some Christmas shopping this week, and I was at Dick Sports, and they have a program called Sports Matters where you can just when you check out you can just donate like dollar or five bucks or whatever and it goes to local uh, school sports programs because unfortunately it's still happening and this maybe you can buy into this as well but where high school programs are becoming so expensive that low-income families can't afford to have their kids play sports and I am a big advocate for youth sports because I do think it changes the way Word. you approach academics. It teaches you different things that you wouldn't get otherwise and I think it's very important. So, sportsmatters.org and if you're at Dick Sports, maybe just throw them some money. That's great. You should do that. I agree. <laughs> That's great. Youth sports. Brent, great. do you have a... Do you I got have, two of them. You got two charities. I got two of them. One is uh, the Puget Sound Keepers. They're a water conservation I don't know, group, I guess. Uh, and you can, what's really cool about the Puget Sound Keepers is every Wednesday you can volunteer and go out on a kayak in Lake Union and pick up litter. You could just show up there and they'll give you a kayak and you what? get to go out on the kayak for two hours and pick up litter. It's great. That's really awesome. Yeah, so That's check that out. Awesome. Check out the Puget Sound Seems Keepers. Seems like a relaxing thing. Might be good for you and you're also helping. It's, That's I did fantastic. it two weeks ago. It was amazing. That Even though it was cold awesome. and wet, it was so fun. Uh, the other one is the Abbey Art, the Fremont Abbey Art Center. Uh, which is like a cool art space yeah, that does art programs for kids. Because much like I feel the same way about yeah, sports yeah, yeah. and music for kids. Absolutely. Um, We're really yeah. into youth. youth yeah, things, I'm just youth into the youth. Uh, yeah. And you can volunteer the there. Gonna be better, and right? do like, you can like volunteer and do shows like The Moth and stuff. And just like, you get into the shows for free. So it's like a cool opportunity too. Check yeah. it out. That's awesome. I love it. Those also, your ones. show for the YMCA is also a charity thing. That's which, a good point. You yeah. can come to that. That's a great point. Mm-hmm. Andy, so that's, on, that's, on the, that's on the 16th at the underground? Yes, indeed. Nailed it. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you guys remember, wonderful. not everyone sucks. Not everyone sucks. <laughs> that's our sucks. new that's slogan. A, hey, not everyone, not sucks. everyone sucks, especially you guys. You guys don't oh, you're suck. You're great, Hudbugs. You're great. Thank you for being on, Brent. You're welcome.